Welcome back, DPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and look, we're outside. We're not coming to you from my living room for a change, and that's because we've got a field test today. We are testing the brand new Laowa Sea Dreamer 0D 19mm f2.8 for the Fujifilm GFX system. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, it's not ideal testing conditions for an ultra wide medium format lens, but that's winter time in Alberta. That's just the way it goes. It's reason there's nothing we can do about it but i do have a big announcement subsequently jordan and i are going to be moving our and our entire extended families to british columbia Kelowna, the okanagan valley uh as soon as we convince everybody to do that because uh, this shit. so my weapon of choice today for our lens test the gfx 100s because it's just so compact fits into this little woten craft three and a half liter pilot perfectly easy to carry around so uh, yeah let's get to it i hope i can find something to shoot oh look jordan it's uh it's Lake Michigan. Cute. Yeah, super cute. So in typical Laowa fashion, the 19 millimeter is actually fully metal construction, which is great because it gives you that really nice buttery smooth manual focusing metal helicoid. But I was actually impressed by how well the aperture ring is built as well. It actually feels a little bit more solid, has a little bit of a nicer click than I've seen on other Laowa lenses. Now, of course, you've got depth of field focusing indicators, which is great if you want to do hyperfocal distance focusing, which on a lens like this, you'd probably actually do quite a bit. Uh, otherwise, you do have a 77 millimeter filter thread. That's nice. A nice metal hood comes with it and overall only about 550 grams so quarter of a knock for a full metal lens i mean it's quite compact quite lightweight easy to carry around now as usual with many low lenses we're talking about a fully mechanical lens here none of the electrical conveniences that you would normally find in a lot of other products so that means of course manual focusing your aperture is not going to be transmitted to your exif data your focal length won't be transmitted none of that you got to program your in-body image stabilization for the right focal length all that kind of stuff, right? I mean, that's pretty typical here. But one thing I do like, a lot of mechanical, uh, non-electronic connection lenses tend to have poor distortion characteristics. You know, if it's not corrected, the camera's not gonna automatically do it. There's no profile, so you gotta do it all manually in Photoshop afterwards. But with the Laowa lenses here, they're basically very low distortion lenses. So there's minimal, if any, correction that needs to be done afterwards. So that's nice when you're previewing your shots and you actually don't have any distortion, but it also saves you time on the back end. Now, a lot of really wide angle primes usually double as decent macro lenses, letting you get really close. And the Laowa C Dreamer, we're getting about 18 centimeters. That's not that physically close to our subject, although keep in mind, this is a medium format camera, so that does make sense. But we're getting about one to five life size reproduction, a little bit less than that. So I wouldn't call this a macro lens. Certainly though, you can get fairly close to things. You can get some neat close up shots, but not macro by any stretch. But you know, I don't think we're gonna get any flare or sunstar shots today, not with the weather the way it is. So hopefully it'll cooperate in the next few days. We'll get some sun to be able to do some more tests. So when you see me again, we'll be back for the rest of the Laowa Sea Dreamer 19 millimeter. All right, and I'm back. And uh, you wouldn't know it by the weather today, but since I last saw you, I was able to actually get some sunny conditions and do some flare and sun star tests. We're gonna talk about that just a bit, but first I wanna to touch on bokeh on this Laowa 19 millimeter. Now, it actually does have nice smooth transitions, but again, this is an ultra wide. It's not really the lens that you're gonna get super shallow depth the field, but when things are out of focus, it has a pretty nice transition. Now this does have a five bladed aperture. What that means is when you're shooting wide open, you're gonna get the round opening of the actual lens mount itself, and you're gonna see that you actually get nice round bokeh balls and actually quite nice looking. But when you stop down, you will get these adorable pentagons. Now, they're kind of cool. They're kind of neat looking. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's a terrible thing, but you definitely notice it and it can be distracting. I and mean, you look at a shot here, you're definitely gonna see specular highlights taking on that shape. Now, normally we use circular bladed apertures and lenses to give an even more smooth rendition of out of focus areas. But what this should do with this pentagonal shaped aperture opening is actually give you really interesting sun stars. So the 19 millimeter Laowa can deliver quite dramatic sun stars as you can see here, 10 blades, you know, quite thin tines, although they don't really come to nice sharp points. I've seen better sun stars, but on much more expensive lenses. So for the price point, I think there's actually quite fun to play with and you'll get those even from F8, F11, up. To, you know f16 f22 so you can actually get some really nice sun stars now of course shooting to the sun we also have to talk about flare now the Laowa coatings actually handle loss of contrast quite well i'm not really noticing any major stuff but like all true Laowas, we get a lot of ghosting here i mean you can see first off just rays of light streaking across from the sun and those can look kind of cool but we're also getting those concentric rings and i've seen that on other Laowa lenses and that happens pretty much throughout the aperture range even stopping down they're not really going away so Cool, 
maybe in certain situations, but honestly, quite busy. And I, I do personally wish they weren't there. Sharpness on the Lawa 19 millimeter. So let's take a look at our chart. So first off, when you're looking at the center of the image shot wide open at f2.8, I mean, it's not bad, but certainly, as you can see here, stopping the lens down f5.6, it does improve quite a bit in the center of the image. Now, looking at the corners, again, shooting wide open, not super sharp, but not bad. Stopping down again to 5.6 does help a lot in the corners. So this is definitely a lens that likes to be stopped down. And I actually found I did most of my shooting from then on when I could at f8 or f11 because I really did notice a difference. Now, one thing that I did notice in our particular sample, when focusing closer on objects, we would actually get a sharp center, but then this sort of ring of blurriness around it. And then actually the corners would get sharp again. So we kind of have this thing where, you know, up close, there's this, this bullseye pattern almost of sharpness. It was kind of strange. However, let's just give a little bit more context here. The extreme corners of the lens, they still kind of get a little squidgy. They just, you get this weird blurred effect on the extreme corners. Definitely lots of vignetting, even when stopping down, that doesn't largely go away. So the last thing I wanna mention is I shot our sample gallery with this Lawa 19 millimeter on both the Fujifilm GFX 100S and the GFX 50S. And I just feel like even when stopped down, the 100 megapixel sensor is just asking a little bit too much out of our particular sample that we were using. Now on the 50 megapixel GFX, I think that was better made in and I was happy with the shots there. And again, stopping down this lens, I think is really important if you're gonna try to get the most sharpness out of it. But it's not that I wouldn't use it on a 100 megapixel sensor. I just feel like if you wanna get the most out of that sensor, you might have to pay more money for something a little bit higher end. So should you buy this lens? Well, I mean, first thing you gotta remember, it's a Lawa, which means it's quirky. I mean, fully mechanical, no electrical connection. Of course, you gotta be able to deal with that and uh, manual focus only. And I mean, the fact that you've got weird ghosting and strange flare and weird sun stars, but actually they can be really funky sometimes. They can sometimes be annoying. I mean, that's part of the charm there. And you know, the sharpness, we've talked about that. Yeah, it does leave just a little bit to be desired. But at the same time, you have to remember that this lens is only $1,000 US roughly. And so, if you're looking for a lens that you're only gonna use occasionally in this ultra wide on your medium format, that could be a really nice option, you know? And if we look at the other options, okay, Fujifilm do make an excellent 20 to 35 zoom. Now, it is an F4, whereas this is a 2.8 prime. And in that regard, I still think the Lawa should be stopped down anyway. So I don't think that's such a major disadvantage for the Fujifilm, but although it's sharp and it's versatile, it is also more than three times the price of the Lawa. And then they also make a 23 millimeter prime, again, an F4, and it's a really nice lens as well, but it's not going as wide. It's full frame equivalent, just doesn't give you that sort of 15 to 16 millimeter equivalent that we're looking for. And at the same time, it's more than two and a half times the price. Now you could also do adapters. You could use a lot of full frame lenses that will actually cover the GFX sensors, but then again, you're gonna have a lot of vignetting, you're gonna have the fall off on the corner, sharpness on the corners isn't gonna be great. And you know, you could also adapt other medium format lenses, but any of the ones that really push this kind of wide angle coverage, they're probably gonna be really expensive used anyways. So those are options to look at, but really I think there is a niche for the Lawa. Leave your comments below. We'd always love to see those and let us know what you think, if this Lawa is a good option for you or not. Otherwise, please subscribe, like the channel. We'd appreciate that. Uh, check out the sample gallery on dpreview.com. The link is in the description below. We'll see you shortly with another episode of Deeper Review TV.